The Galactic Empire, ending the continued production of clones following the end of the Clone Wars, is often cited as one of its biggest mistakes by many fans, primarily over the fact of them being replaced by a vastly inferior fighting force of non-clone human recruits. While their production cost is frequently the reason raised for their decommissioning, the real motive has more to do with control rather than money. Ember Palpatine is the ultimate manipulator who understands the importance of public perception as well as the potentially fragile position he could find himself in if he were not to play his cards right during the early stages of the Empire. He still requires the support of the Senate and more crucially the common people of the galaxy if he wishes to expand his power to a future point where the former would no longer be needed and the latter too indoctrinated to oppose his rule. As a result, Palpatine must still maintain his image of being a man of the people who seeks to both protect and provide for them, to which the former Republic and Jedi had failed to do. The best way to achieve that is to give the people the perception of power and self-realization. For the first time in centuries, the everyday citizens of the galaxy will enforce the laws of their government themselves, not the elites with their personal forces, the corporates with their private armies, or even the secretive sorcerers once known as Jedi. A clone legion stationed on a world would be seen as outside occupiers by its residents, but an imperial force made up by that planet's very own citizens would give a very different impression. A populace would be far less likely to rebel against troopers made up of members of its own community. The idea is to get the people to willingly put the chains of Palpatine's rule upon themselves, with the false belief that they are their own masters. On top of that, those that joined the new ranks of the Empire through the establishment of Imperial Academies received opportunities that were never available from the Republic. For most backwater planets, these academies that came to train future stormtroopers and other Imperial personnel were the only opportunity the human inhabitants had in hopes of leaving their impoverished lives and gaining careers beyond mining and farming, a common trade for many living on these past neglected worlds. This instilled a sense of gratitude in countless recruits who came to see Palpatine making good on his word of providing for the people as well as giving them a personal stake in the matter. These academies also allowed propaganda to be directly injected into them in a centralized manner, further solidifying loyalty. We have a video going more in depth over how these academies functioned and the overall upbringing of young Imperials for those that are interested. Finally, ending the cloning production and throwing the clones themselves under the bus was yet another means of appeasing the public. Palpatine was fully aware of the people's increasing dislike for the clones near the end of the war, mainly over their protests of basic services like clean water and consistent electricity being put aside in favor of spending for the clone army. Eliminating such an unpopular spending measure and diverting said funds towards the people was yet another tactic of getting their support. Other factors, such as the rise of human supremacy, also played a role in this too, which we cover more in this video. In conclusion, having the citizens of his empire police themselves made far more practical sense and served Palpatine politically in the long term. Sure, the clone army was a far more effective fighting force when it came pound to pound against the conventional opposing armies during times of war, but there was no war or rival armies left to threaten his power from the outside. The replacement of clones with human recruits was done to ensure that there could be no major war or even the possibility of a galactic scale army being formed against him. Whether it be because the propaganda machine convincing billions that the loss of their freedoms for security was necessary to prevent a devastating war like the Clone Wars, or the reluctance of others to fight against their potential neighbors. Palpatine's focus was on securing his hold of power from within. His enemies on the outside had already been destroyed. Now, while Palpatine's rule ultimately did fail, it is unlikely that maintaining or even expanding the clone army would have made much of a difference in preventing his fall if his other future decisions remained the same. We'll have another video going over the primary mistakes Palpatine made that led to his downfall and why a continued clone army would likely not have changed that fate.